Hi everyone, this is going to be a quick mini lecture on GI disorders. We're going to briefly review GERD, celiac disease, and IBS. So GERD is gastroesophageal reflux disease. Essentially what is happening here is chronic heartburn or acid reflux. So as you can see, the stomach here has all of our pH level, again, in our mixed up food, and the pH level is very low here of stomach acid, about 2. And in a normal healthy person, this sphincter stays nice and tight and is closed. So when we swallow the food, that sphincter opens and it comes in and it starts churning and mixing with the stomach acid. Now as someone who has GERD, for example, what's happening is that sphincter is opened up and now that stomach acid is going to come up to the esophagus and it burns the inside of the esophageal lining, which means it causes a lot of pain and damages the esophagus. There's a way nutritionally that we can reduce GERD and that is called a cap-free diet. The C stands for caffeine. The A stands for acidic, and the P stands for pepper. So somebody who has GERD should follow a cap-free diet and should take out foods that have caffeine in it, so things like coffee or caffeinated teas. They should remove acidic foods, so things like tomatoes. And then they should also remove peppery foods, so anything that's really spicy. Now, for whatever reason, uh, what happens when we eat those foods, it it allows that sphincter to become loose and food and that stomach acid will come back up. So by going on a cap-free diet, you can help reduce that sphincter opening up, therefore reduce reflux. Um, the other thing that can help decrease that is alcohol as well. So removing alcohol can help reduce GERD. Okay, here is celiac disease. Now celiac disease has something to do with damaging the microvilli so here is an example of a normal, healthy, small intestine where we have all these finger-like projections that allow us to increase the surface area of absorption. So celiac disease, what happens is they have the inability to break down a protein called gluten, so they must avoid gluten. Now when they eat gluten, what happens is it destroys that normal microvilli and they become basically little tiny hills versus those finger-like projections. So what's a side effect of that? Well, you're unable to absorb the nutrients as efficiently as you were when you have this high surface area. So now you have reduced absorption of nutrients, so what do you think is going to happen? Micronutrient deficiencies. So oftentimes, celiac disease is actually captured by having things like low iron. So someone may feel very fatigued, and that's because they're not able to absorb all their nutrients from their food because the microvilli has been damaged. Now, in order to go back to this normal functioning microvilli, they must remove gluten. Now, gluten is a protein that's found in wheat, rye, and barley. Gluten is not a synonym for wheat, however wheat does contain gluten. So the only people that must remove gluten from their diet are people who have celiac disease. In a healthy person, um, wheat and gluten are okay as long as they don't have some type of allergy or an intolerance to that food. So things like crackers would not be okay unless they're a gluten-free cracker. And then things like rice would be acceptable because that is considered a naturally gluten-free food. However, anything that has wheat, rye, or barley in it and that protein, gluten, they cannot have. Finally, we have two different types of um, kind of irritable bowel syndrome, which would be diverticulosis or diverticulitis. Now, this happens with this diverticula become present, so these little pockets along the GI tract. Now, those pockets, when they're just normally sitting there, is called diverticulosis. Now, when somebody has diverticulosis, they should be eating a high-fiber diet. This high-fiber diet allows the food to move nice and smooth through that GI tract and not get stuck and trapped inside these little polyps. Now, when something happens and those polyps become inflamed, it's considered diverticulitis. Now, diverticulitis is inflammation of the diverticula. 
Now that causes severe pain, so they need to go on a low fiber diet, or what we might call a low residual diet. So foods that contain nuts, seeds, and skin, so like the skin of the potato or the skin of the apple, those should be removed when that is in an inflammatory state in order to alleviate some of those symptoms.